Welcome to episode 5 of Is It Worth It? I am your host, and today we're going to be talking about whether the 2020 Kia Soul is worth it. It's probably not, but we'll see. Before we end today's video, I'd like to thank our sponsors for today. Uh, we're going to go raid Shadow Legends once again. They have sponsored us again. It's like every single day they're emailing me about sponsorships. Anyway, uh, it's a cool game. You should download it. I don't really care about the sponsorship, so... Yeah, downloaded it, please. Um, anyway, the 2020 Kia Soul has five, nope, six variants with the, going from the LX, the S, the GT Line, X Line, EX, and GT Line Turbo. And the prices go from about $18,000 to $28,000. So, so the best choices are probably either the GT Line or X Line models. And they're both, and because they're both similarly priced, but have two completely different styles. The GT Line's body color exterior trim, bright red lower body accents, 18 inch wheels, give us the soul a sporty look. While the X Line's black plastic flender, fender flares, rugged lower body accents, and available earth tone color palette makes it look more off road ready. There are two available engines on the 2020 Kia Soul with a Starting with the base 147 horsepower 2.0 liter four cylinder engine that can be that could be had with either a six speed manual or a continuously variable automatic transition transmission. The X line Soul X line with the CVT had needed eight seconds to reach 60 miles per hour, but this isn't really feel make it feel underpowered in normal driving. The base engine actually feels a little bit like peppy because like it's got a bit of a jump to it probably used to the VTEC that it may may not have uh and it has very low gear ratios for extra passing power the top spec gt line turbo has a 201 horsepower servocharged 1.4 liter four cylinder with a seven speed automatic transition with a 6.4 0 to 60 time depending on the figuration the soul carries an epa fuel economy Rating as high as 35 miles per gallon on the highway or as low as 25 miles per hour on the speedway. Or, uh, not the speedway, the highway. Sorry, no, sorry. 35 miles per hour on highway and 25 miles per, miles per gallon in the city. And this isn't bad for it being, looking like a box. Uh, the Soul has two rivals, the Nissan Kicks and the Hyundai Venue. Even though later today we're going to be discussing it, comparing it to the Hyundai Veloster. And so, yeah, make sure you stay tuned for that. So, the Soul's upright body provides a spacious interior with plenty of room for people and cargo. Uh, Kia's designers have incorporated enough useful cheekiness inside to match the Soul's fashion forward exterior, including textured door panels, textured door panel inserts, and colorful trim pieces. Other stuff such as ambient lighting, wireless smartphone charging pad, heads-up display, push-up button, push-button ignition, heated seats, and heating steering wheel are also optional. Um, has the Soul has plenty of room for customization with two-tone paint jobs and a plethora of interior color schemes. Uh, behind the rear seats, the tall roof Soul provided enough space for even for seven carry-on suitcases to stack in the cargo area, with all seats folded. Uh, it should be noted that the car, the Soul's back seats do not fold flat. We were able to hold there. It was be, it was, it was So if you did fold the back seats all the way, you're all able to hold up to 50 cases. Um, now moving on to the Hyundai Veloster, uh, has five different variants. I mean, they got the 0 0.0 manual which is 19,500. You got the 2.0 premium, turbo R-Spec, turbo DCT, and the turbo ultimate DCT. And the, the most expensive one being the turbo ultimate DCT is $29,000. The Veloc Veloster's base model is nicely equipped. It has 17 inch wheels and boasts amenities such as daytime running lights, automatic projector beam headlights, and heated power adjustable side view mirrors. Um, all the Velosters come with the Android Auto or Apple CarPlay smartphone integration, as well as driver assistant technology, such as like forward collision migration and lane keeping assistance. 
Uh, Veloster borrowers can buy either a base engine, which is a 2.0 liter four cylinder that generates 147 horsepower and 132 foot pounds of torque. And then all the trims with the turbo descriptor are motivated by a turbocharged 1.6 liter four cylinder engine that provides 201 horsepower and 190 foot, 195 foot pounds of torque. With the six speed and all of them, uh, all, all models, power is sent to the front wheels with some front wheel drive. And then transmission choices either a six speed manual or automatic or a seven speed dual clutch uh or dual clutch automatic transition uh they've lost a turbo ultimate dcts which is what the dual clutch automatic transition means uh the Veloster has a zero 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 to 60 miles per hour time of six seconds um gas mileage for the Veloster hatchbacks have has the base the base engine topping out at 28 to 34 miles per gallon city highway and then the optional turbocharged engine the gas mileage peaks at 2734 miles per gallon so it's basically the same thing one is one less mile per gallon for the city but it's not that big of a deal um the veloster's cabin seats four and features solid craftsmanship materials are used of decent quality but even though the even though there's some, there's a few just hard plastic that uh, makes it like seem like it's a different material. Cabin's aesthetic is pleasant enough, but there are other picks that are in the class that de deliver a more upscale interior design. Uh, the Veloster is built with one long door on the driver's side and two shorter doors on the passenger side, which makes this a four door vehicle. <laughs> there's not a lot of those. Um, in addition to the third passenger side door makes it easier for the back seat to enter next to the vehicle. With the rear seats in place, the Veloster provides 20 cubic feet of cargo space, and this expands to 44.5 cubic feet with the seats lowered, and these are very solid for a small hatchback. Overall, don't buy a Kia Soul. They're so ugly, you don't want one. <laughs> the Veloster is better looking, and I mean, if you bought the Kia Soul, I mean, it makes it look like you're in Minecraft. I don't know if you want that. Okay, in terms of news, there is a electric GMC Hummer SUV coming out. Uh, there is both an S there's both a Hummer truck and an SUV model, and they both have removable roof panels. That's kind of cool. So GMC's Hummer sub brand will launch a all electric SUV model in addition to the previous announced Hummer pickup. This is because Hummer has been kind of silent. They've been like kind of gone missing over the past like 10, 15 years. And it's nice to see them come out with a new car. The Hummer truck will be called the GMC Hummer EV SUT and the SUV will be called the GMC Hummer EV SUV. The pickup will make its debut in May 20th, 2020, which is also my birthday. So I might be able to get one by then. Probably not, but you know, who knows? An SUV will arrive later this year. So for this day of history, it is... What is it? February 6th, I want to say. Or March 6th. Um, the Ferrari F50 has been released. Uh, it's capable of going 0 to 60 in 3.4 seconds with a top speed of 194 miles per hour. This was introduced into the Geneva Motor, Short, Motor Show. The two-door, two-seat roadster with a removable hardtop and a 4.7 liter naturally aspirated 60-valve V12 engine that was once developed by the 3.5 liter V12 used in, 19, used in the 1990 Ferrari 641 Formula One car. Only 349 cars were made, and the last F50 was produced in Maranello, Italy in July of 1997. Thank you for listening to this podcast. I hope I didn't bore you too much. I probably did, but it's fine. Uh, make sure you tune in next week. I'll see you guys later.